Hello there! Welcome back for another Heffy Doodle video. This is Cassie. Today we're going to be making some Distress Oxide ink smushed backgrounds. So let's talk about the products we're going to be using. We're going to be using this Otter Side stamp set along with its matching die. I end up making three cards because I just love this stamp set so much. We're also going to be using the Wave to Me stencil. Love that stencil. Goes so perfectly with the Otter Side stamp. I also had a couple other products we we're going to be using. I thought we were going to be using this whole lot of hearts. We don't end up using it. We do use this strips of ease die and then we also use the stitch circle die. So let's get started on our backgrounds. I'm going to start off with some tumbled glass distress oxide, next mermaid lagoon, lagoon and then some blueprint sketch. I have put this onto my waffle flower media mat and then I spritzed it with some water and then I'm going to smush my watercolor paper right into that. I want to keep that color kind of centralized so I am not going to move my paper around too much but I am going to heat set it in between each of my layers. So once that is good and dry then I'll spritz this with a little bit more water and stick it down right on top where it was before trying to keep the colors just separate. Uh, but I love doing this because it adds so much texture and then I'll come in and do this again adding more of those little splatters and then heat set that in between and then even come in with a little bit more water because there's plenty of ink on there and then I will to uh, put my background down on top of that one more time and then I'll heat set that as well. I'll clean up my mess and I'll end up actually doing this two more times so I'll have three separate backgrounds. I love how this technique can end up giving you three different sort of looks but then you still have three same backgrounds. I'm going to come in with some splatter because that's kind of the fun of this. I did splatter some water on that and, and then dried it up. And then I'm also going to take this Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide Spray. I'm going to take, or you know, make sure that I, I uh, shake it up pretty well, just shaking it like a bell. And then I'll take the cap off and then I'll just splatter it that way. I didn't want to just straight up spray. So taking the cap off will get you these little nice splatters, which is awesome. And then um, I'll set those off to the side and I'll, I'll bring in my heat tool just to kind of speed up the heat process to make it dry a little bit quicker. But boy, I sure love how those end up looking um, just with that little extra splatter on top. It's just so fun. These backgrounds are so fun to make. I could sit and do these all day. Now here's where I'm going to bring in the stencil. I'm going to spray some pixie spray on that because it's a little bit of a delicate uh, stencil. I'll tack that down and I'm going to end up trying to alter these backgrounds just a little bit, each one. I'm going to pull in some of this chipped sapphire along with a blending brush. And then coming in from the side, I'm going to be darker more on the sides and then kind of let that blend in on each of the sides. And then I'll do that on the other side. Kind of holding that stencil down. I don't think I sprayed enough of the pixie spray, honestly, but um, going with the waves helps. And then I'll peel that off and you'll have this really nice subtle wave stencil background. I'll clean off my stencil and then I'm going to pull in some of this Nouveau Glimmer Paste in the color Moonstone. And that will end up really altering this background. So I'll take a palette knife and then scrape this all along the sides. I try to go with the wave. It tends to help with uh, keeping the Glimmer Paste from smushing underneath the stencil. But that Pixie Spray also helps an awful lot too. So I'm just going to make sure that I have that entire background covered with that Moonstone. And this is more of a clear glitter glimmer paste. And I'll put the extra back into my container because waste not, want not, right? Clean off my stencil a little bit more. Don't want to waste any of that. And then that background I'm going to set off to the side to do some drying. I'll clean off my stencil one more time. And then this time I'm going to leave it on my mat. I'm going to spritz it with some water really heavily. Then I'll take my piece, set it there, and then set the stencil right on top, water side down. Let that set for a second, kind of pushing down. I'll even bring in a roll of paper towels and roll that right over the top. And it will pull that stencil back. And then you can start to see what that water is doing. Because obviously distress oxides, uh, they reactivate with water or any sort of wet medium. So I'll bring in my heat tool to intensify that a little bit more. 
and then you can see how different each of those backgrounds is. Now the one that I did this the sponging onto, uh, that one looks a little bit like the one that I did the water, but you can see if you look up close the subtle difference, which is so neat. I love how similar but yet different those look and then here we have our glimmer paste background that one is just so different but so cool you see those splatters of the mermaid lagoon just sticking out and it's just so neat love it now we're going to do our stamping so i have some express it cardstock that i have put into my misty and i have laid out all of my stamps making sure that i had leave plenty of room for die cutting and i'm going to grab my memento espresso truffle ink now all the memento inks are they work really well with alcohol markers and so I wanted to grab a brown now if I wanted to make that brown even more subtle I would have grabbed my rich cocoa but I grabbed the espresso truffle and that one is nice and dark but it is still brown which is is different than my usual uh, which is kind of fun really and now I'm going to do my coloring so here are the colors I plan to use I'll put them up on the screen for you for the inside, their little faces and their tummies, uh, I use the Y28, and I do apologize that my camera keeps kind of going in and out. I'm not sure if it's because I have a bit of glimmer paste on my knuckle or what the deal is, but my camera is having a bit of an issue trying to focus on my hand or something. But I'll come in and then I will blend out that color just a little bit so that E25 and the Y28 they're a little bit different on the spectrum which is kind of fun but it ends up blending out very nicely. The way I like to color is I always like to put my lighter color down first so in this case I'm going to grab my E37 and I'll put down a nice base of the E37 all over my little otters and I tend to not like to go too far in advance which is why I'll stick with one or two images at a time simply because I like to the reason I put the the base down of the lighter color is because it kind of wets the paper just a little bit uh, it's not you know a, a big difference but it, it moistens it just enough so that when I come in with that next color I can blend it out a little bit easier now if I had walked away I put down my first color put down my second color and walk away before blending you will have a little bit harder time coming in to blend which is why I tend to like to just work on one at a time and maybe that ends up costing me more time in the end but uh, for the look that I'm going for that seems to work the best I know that everybody colors a little bit differently so my suggestion is to just kind of practice practice both ways practice all ways and find out what works best for what you are going for and then once again come in with my darker color and I'll only show you these two little otters because they're all the same I do the exact same process for all the otters and I'll be honest with you I stamped these otters out on three separate panels so I have so many otters to color because <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure how many I wanted on each one so I figured the more the merrier and I'm already in the coloring mode so why not do a bunch of coloring and die cutting all at once and now for their little noses I'll bring in the W8 you could have come in with like a pink that would be cute too and then I'll color all the rest of the otters on here and then I'm going to come in and start coloring the rock so for the rock I'll use W4 as my base coat and then I'm going to use a lot of flicking motions which is what I typically tend to do anyway for my W6 just where I want those shadows and shades to be and then I'll come in one more time with that W4 to blend that out just a little bit and then I'll move on to coloring all the other little pieces now they're so small that it isn't necessary to come in with too many color blends but I do for most of them have at least two so I'll start with RV06 and then RV66 and I'm primarily just sticking to like pink yellow and a very light green for all of them and I'm just finding little areas where I can bring that color in so here on the package I will bring in that pink and I don't even end up blending that one out and then I'll come in with some yellow the Y15 and the Y17 for my star and then the package as well I find that sometimes when I'm trying to make a lot of cards all using the same sorts of images I like to pick up my colors ahead of time 
I end up saving time in the long run when I do it this way. So YG1 or YG61 and G43 don't necessarily look like they would go together, but they do. And there they all are. So now I'm going to get ready to start doing some die cutting. So I wasn't kidding when I said I stamped them out three times. I'm going to grab all of their coordinating dies and I'll tack those down with a little bit of washi tape and run that through until those are all cut out. Next we'll be stamping our sentiments and I ended up using the colors Oreo Crunch and Plum Pudding both by Heffy Doodle and so I'm using my magic powder bag to go over the top of those colors and I my thought process with all of the stamping was that I basically just stamped them a bunch of times on both of the cardstocks. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted those to match out, so I stamped plenty of sentiments. I don't think that I ended up using them all, but I used quite a few on the outside and on the insides of the cards as well. I'm finding that I'm really enjoying finishing off my insides, and uh, it's just kind of fun that way. So. You can tell that the magic powder bag helped quite a bit on the Oreo crunch. I forgot to use it on the plum pudding, so I do have some stray embossing powder in different places. But I cover that with my alabaster embossing powder by Brutus Monroe, and then I'll heat set those until those are smooth and melted. And this is where I bring in the strips of ease die. I'll put those over their coordinating sentiments that I plan to use, tack that down with a little bit of washi tape, and run that through my die cutting machine until all of those sentiments have been cut out and then I will trim those down. And now we're gonna get ready to start actually assembling some cards. For my first card, this is the Nouveau Glimmer Paste background. I did cut out a circle using the stitch circle dies uh, from some more of that Plum Pudding cardstock. And my card bases are some sidewalk cardstock by Brutus Monroe. I'm going to use some liquid glue. This is the Nouveau adhesive, deluxe adhesive that I'll just use that to tack down my first panel. This one I cut down to four inches by five and a half inches. So it just it leaves a small border on each side. Because I'm doing this on glimmer paste, you wanna make sure you're using a strong adhesive. So I'm using that liquid glue on my circle. I will end up using some foam tape on the back of my sentiments. And on the back of my little otters, I was debating whether or not I should put something in their hands because I love how that die cuts those little otters. They can hold something in their little paws. It's so cute. So I'll tack that down and then we'll move on to the next one. See, I was able to put the ball in each of those little guy's hands. I put foam tape just on the Otterly, lining that up on my glass mat, and then I'm gonna use some liquid glue for the other two uh, sentiments. I love how these all just mix and match so wonderfully. So this one will say, you are Otterly fabulous in every way. That first one said, Otterly adore you. It's just, <laughs> it's so fun how the puns and, uh, I just had a lot of fun playing around with these little otters and all their little sentiments. So I did put foam tape on the back of each of my otters, so I'll peel all of that off, and then I'll tack those little guys down. And then once I get those little guys attached to the front of my card panel, I'm going to attach that to my card base using some more of that liquid glue. I did cut this one down to four inches by five and a half inches, so it does leave a little bit of a border. I'm gonna put that border more on that left-hand side so that you have a nice little bit of that popping through. And then we'll do the exact same thing for our final card. And just kind of changing up the layout a little bit, changing up the little otters that we use and obviously the sentiments that we use. And then it just makes them all a little bit different, but also the same. And then they could be used for different occasions as well. So this one would be a birthday card, and so I've made it so that this little otter is holding a package in his paw. This one has a ball, so maybe he's bringing a ball to whoever the recipient is, which is adorable. And then I will tack down that other little guy like he's on top of that rock. <laughs> so fun. And then again, I will use that same liquid glue to attach this down to my card base. Um, but I'm gonna attach a couple of little shells around the rocks to add just a little bit of extra interest because I did color and cut a bunch of them, so I might as well, right? And then I'm going to leave more of a border on the right-hand side for this one. So it's kind of fun to change it up just a little bit like that. And as I said, I did do all of the insides, which was so super fun. Uh, as a last bit of embellishment on the outside, since these are otters and they're wet, um, I decided to put a little bit of gel pen on their heads for some reflection and also on their little noses. And then I'll show you each of the cards.
along with their mac or their insides. So here's our first card, Otterly Adore You. You are utterly fabulous in every way. You are utterly fabulous in every way. And I utterly adore you. And then have an utterly wonderful birthday. And then just the two little otters holding more presents. All right, so that finishes off our cards for today. I hope you enjoyed the twist of the Distress Oxide smushed backgrounds and how I altered each one of those. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by.